Good morning, everybody. So this is the last session. I'm pleased to introduce uh, the chairman of this session, Ernst Geckeler, from the University of Saarland. Thank you. Let me first say a few uh, personal words. Uh, yesterday at the conference dinner, there were a couple of people that found very uh, warm and friendly words about me. Um, I was very touched about this and I'm very grateful to everybody who contributed in this sense. Okay, so we may now start and um, <coughs> the first uh, speaker of this morning is Jia Fu Yu and he will talk about arithmetic satake compactification and algebraic Greenfeld modular forms. So, please. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. I also thank the organizers for the opportunity to talk. So this is a joint work with uh, Urs Hato, also in the audience. So in this talk, I will explain how to use the compactification uh, to define and construct the Greenfield module forms and use the mass formula to study the Greenfield module form map P. Uh, complication and mass formula are two of important works that Professor Gekeller has done. So uh, we're starting with uh, setup. This is uh, uh, already people have seen this several times. So uh, let's see it will be the smooth, uh, projectic, uh, geometric kinetic, curve uh, defined over FQ. And uh, we fix the cross point, and that uh, f to be the uh, rational function of the curve. And uh, we let a to be the uh, functions regular away from infinity. Okay, and for any element non-zero in a, we define the degree of a is to be the dimension of A modular, the ideal generated by A. And we also denote by A will be the ideal ring of F. And uh, A infinity, the prime to P, prime to uh, final ideal ring. And that uh, R is greater than one integer that put G equal to G L R. Okay, and then we let V to be the final place of A. So now uh, we uh, want to start the automorphic form that we think K will going to be a label uh, of the list form K V and point to V in this uh, finite tail and where uh, this is a fine, we require to be fine, open, compact. And fine already explained in the Tuesday's uh, talk. And uh, where we let k place at v will be always the maximum one. This is a fixed and the prime to v part will allow to be very. Okay. And for example, uh, a typical example of K will be the uh, principal congruent subgroup. So for example, if K equal K N, and which is just the kernel of the G A two G A ma N. Okay, and for in here we do it require the n divided by n. V. This is the principal principal congruence subgroup. Okay, so uh, with this, oh, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> then we let uh, dinner by m of R k. Uh, this uh, will be a Greenfield module form. Greenfield module scheme, module space. And that uh, over localization of 
uh, red R and uh, label K prime to B. Okay, and then it's known that this is a smooth uh, integral uh, affine uh, scheme. Okay, and over a b and of relative dimension. Uh, so but uh, one have to be careful. This is integral, but but not geometric integral. They had base change to algebraic closure. It has several components. Okay. So then, uh, so since uh, K is a fine structure, so we have a universal family. You know, by this, this, uh, this is a universal family. So uh, in this talk, uh, uh, several times of that, we fix the R and K. So uh, if I don't write uh, R and K means that uh, I already, this uh, is already fixed. And that uh, the relative D algebra, the, this is an ample shift. Um, And uh, for our study, we also want to study the uh, prime to p heck correspondence. So uh, on the list, it ju not just come with a single element, it also with together with the translation. And people might would like to look at the tower of uh, Greenfield module scheme, and then together with the prime to uh, label kv moving around. So, uh, so suppose I have any element, uh, prime to V, and then I can consider the uh, right translation so namely I move, put a one point and I just map to it to uh, so this is the uh, right translation and this is of course an isomorphism, and then one can show that uh, uh, there exists a unique extension. Uh, just map the really, uh, so this is a uh, universal really uh, algebraic variety. So this is physical line bundle, geometric line bundle. And so we have uh, this uh, universal family, this time I denote by k, and phi of k to uh, the universal, t universal family over here. And which makes the diagram commute. Namely, uh, this, uh, I, so I just, uh, sorry, let me a little bit sloppy. Okay, so this is a, a Cartesian diagram. Okay, and also that uh, the the omega uh, k inverse k, this uh, hard line bundle, hard shift here. If I pull back to uh, this ig, that will be get. Uh, uh, this is a canonical isomorphism. This is very important. Okay, so this uh, was. Uh, smooth part, everything will have it. But uh, because of, uh, as we know that uh, in order to study the uh, module forms, we need to uh, compatify it. And because of uh, the module space is, uh, is just affine, so if we just take uh, a global session of this high power of this line bundle, we get something like a weak <laughs> trivial module form. Okay, so, so we uh, want to get a uh, uh, good, uh, Module form, we need a complication. So, let me describe this. Okay. 
So then uh, we uh, follow the approach that uh, of due to pink. So first of all, give a definition. Um, a generalized dream field A module. A module, uh, say uh, E by over uh, a scheme S is called uh, weakly separated. If uh, for every point, every gene field modules over an algebraic cost field, then we look at the uh, collect the fibers such that uh, the fiber of this family S is isomorphic to <coughs> the given one is finite. This is called a separate. So, of course, the universal family, you just uh, for each point, you, you, you select one as a representative. And then sometimes we have to add a level structure. So, usually, a uh, uh, fine module space is also weakly separating. And then, well, then when we want to extend to a boundary, we, we don't want to have a something like a vibration, positive fiber. So, if I have a point, I can make a blow up, then that will be a positive dimension. So, all of these kinds of vibration has to be contract. And then uh, this is the uh, definition. Generally, it's just like a uh, semi being variety that uh, the rank is not constant. OK, so then one can give that definition for the Satake complication. Suppose we have uni uh, a family, a universal family of them. And, and uh, uh, so this is time I call arithmetics. <coughs> Uh, Satake complication. Of uh, M is an is an open and dense immersion. Such that satisfy two property. Uh, one is that we require the uh, com com the underlying space is a normal uh, integral scheme, and then the morphism, the structural morphism is a proper and flat. Over. Okay, this is a, a complication, and we also require that uh, the universe, the universal family, uh, extend uniquely. Oh, uh, it just extend. The turn out is always uniquely. Uh, to uh, uh, to this uh, separate uh, generalized uh, dream field a module uh, of rank less than uh, uh, the important thing I forgot. This is uh, uh, weakly separated. Weakly. So, so this is uh, the definition for an uh, arithmetic static calculation. So, if we uh, uh, replace a uh, the, the, this a by f, and then this is exactly the same definition given by Richard Pink. Okay, so let's just uh, 
model on the, his approach. And then uh, we call, we will call uh, uh, this uh, universal family, even though it is not given by a modular functor. Okay. So this is the definition. And then uh, our result is just that uh, uh, such a communication exists and also unique and, and satisfy certain uh, good functoriality property. Okay, the first statement is that for even given any k, a uh, projectic uh, arithmetic uh, SATA k complication exists. One is that uh, the uh, complication and also the universal family is unique. They are unique up to uni isomorphism. Okay, so it's canonical, and three is the uh, Hodge line bundle. Uh, we can define in the same way, but now it's compatified and then take a deal. This is again ample on the uh, Satake complication. And the fourth is about the functoriality. So remember, we have i and j, so the morphism. Ig and Jg is tens uh, uniquely uh, to the uh, Cartesian diagram. Mm, so we have uh, E k phi k. Now this is Ij. Bar of K, okay, if you want to put R here. Okay. And also uh, the complication, uh, the hard line bundle of this. And after pull it back, it's a canonical isomorphic to hard line bundle on this one. Okay. So, uh, so uh, people have uh, made uh, many contributions to uh, this direction. So I should uh, mention this. Okay. Well, since uh, this already explained, uh, people have seen uh, talks on complications. So I just make this uh, very brief. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Jim Phil, and of course Kate Keller, and uh, Kaplanov. which are pink. And we also have a uh, uh, Le Ben Kuo and uh, Sinha Tori. And on this the Tuesday, we also learn the uh, Nicole uh, Rosa and uh, Betty. OK, so. Um, 
So our uh, result is the same as on the talk on the Tuesday, except that we have a more about this functionality. And uh, so then we have uh, also need this computation for study the uh, Greenfield module for map P. And this is a different application. And then uh, for the prime to P uh, hacker action, that this is uh, more important in our work. So that we have this XOR. Okay, so uh, I I don't have probably uh, don't have time to explain the the idea of a consortium, but this is um, the idea is also already uh, essentially due to the Richard Pink. So I will just skip this. But I would like to make a, a couple of remarks. So the first one is the actually we follow uh, almost the same way as uh, what Richard Pink. So the, our complication after base change to the general fiber, this is exactly Pink's complication. And I also want to uh, mention that uh, for high rank, what is the main difference is that uh, complication is no longer uh, smooth. It's uh, not regular if uh, R greater than 3. It is, but the consortium is still normal, but it's not regular. And 3 is that uh, the consortium using the uh, closure normalization. And as a result is that uh, we lose uh, the, uh, the modular interpretation. Uh, for the points uh, in the boundary. Okay, uh, people might wonder why we still have a family for each point. We do have a fiber. We have a, a, a general, uh, just dream field A module, but small, uh, but small rank. But what happened is that um, what I really mean is the defined by the modular interpretation, the, the modular functor. And then, uh, for example, it will be uh, difficult and it's more difficult uh, to, to study the singularity in the boundary. Singularity in the boundary. Because of uh, losing the mark, uh, the, this mark functor, so we, it's uh, more difficult to define what is the point in the Artinian ring, and we don't have a uh, deformation, and the deformation is very crucial to study the singularity, and uh, we don't have. So this makes, uh, I don't know, uh, it just the uh, echo is very uh, difficult. OK. OK, um, that's it. Uh, so then I will just move to the uh, definition of uh, algebraic field module form. So for each uh, positive integer and uh, for any coefficient, it's a localized algebra. And then uh, one can uh, uh, weaken the condition if all uh, a <coughs> this uh, algebra if um, k equal to principal congruence. Because of uh, when k equal to uh, principal congruence, that uh, previous um, a uh, subject complication actually can extend to uh, uh, this a localized a n. Okay, and then we define this r uh, k. Uh, k remember k is k v of the v. And all this is just defined by the, the usual way, the taking the global mm -hmm. section of uh, complication, and then they change to l. Then the power of Hodge bundle and base change the coefficient. So this is a definition, and then we call the space of um, um, algebraic Greenfield um, module forms 
of uh, uh, weight K, uh, rank R, and label K, K and over L. Okay, so we can, now we have a definition for module form for a quite general uh, base. And then uh, since this is proper, so we know this is a finite, that finite module. Okay. <coughs> okay, we have definition. And, um, right, so, so then uh, the reason we call it uh, algebraic because of there's also uh, another approach of a uh, definition <coughs> coming from the analytic way which is already discussing on um, this Wednesday. So we have uh, this uh, result due to uh, Boston. and pin let uh, we have a canonical isomorphism between the forms of uh, R, K, C infinity and then to the analytically defined using the rigid analytic function on the Junfield period domain on this okay and so then uh, so the result is that this is um, analytic defines a uh, um, analytic module form forms a finite dimensional vector space. Okay, because it's finite. Oh, before that, probably it's very difficult to see this space is a uh, is a finite dimension. Okay, so then uh, besides the definition and the um, construction, we uh, I I should uh, give a example. Sorry. So. Uh, this is uh, already also appeared in a previous talk, but now we have in the algebraic setting and more, uh, more more general ground field, so that we have a universal family. This is uh, over the arithmetic complication. Then one can consider the gene field A module for each A in A. Then we consider coefficient. Okay, uh, some of them all may vanish. But um, so then uh, we know that uh, coefficient form uh, lives in the uh, way QR minus 1 of RK and this uh, uh, of integer. Okay, so they, these are coefficient module forms. And then, uh, so besides this consortium, and uh, we all we are also interested on in the hex structure, not just as a vector space. So, um, <coughs> so then we uh, we consider the situation that I uh, let the label grows at the limit of k prime v and. Uh, your form of so then namely at v I fixed but the prime to p prime to v I vary I, I take in that is limit then I can take the k prime to v invariant so I kept v and then kept prime to p invariant of uh, this and then I define it by and theta of k of r k. Oh. <laughs> okay, so then, um, so in order to get a uh, uh, hacker operator, we have to go go uh, at the, this point to p level, and then take a invariant, and then of course uh, taking the invariant, we uh, inherit the hacker algebra of a uh, point to p point to v module structure, I act on that. And so we are, uh, the, the naive question is the compare of these two uh, space. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, 
I, I, maybe I, okay. Um, right. So I, okay. So I, I a little bit, um, okay. So, okay. So then uh, maybe, uh, okay. So we, we have, a, um, so we can have a map. This is M K of R L. Uh, KL uh, to this M tilde of K uh, R K L. Okay, and so if uh, just consider special case when uh, L equal to um, L equal to A localized, then uh, we we have uh, okay. Just uh, sorry, I. <laughs> And and then uh, one can uh, so on, on here we have uh, uh, the the um, so I, I want to say that in this in the first case this is uh, isomorphism okay so one can uh, prove this and then uh, this using the normality of normality of the uh, modular space one can prove this and then. Uh, with this, then one can have a, a inherit the hack, hack action on this, uh, what we define modular space. And then living in here, we have a coefficient form. And then one can show the following nice property. Is that suppose I keep, pick any h in the hack algebra, and then I can uh, hit that. It will be uh, actually this coefficient form or eigen. Uh, eigen form, and then uh, a is uh, just a character to uh, see uh, just actually uh, yes a a infinity a a cos okay and uh, so then we also know that the heck algebra would be the uh, uh, straight tensor product of prime to prime to uh, <coughs> V and so uh, so we, we can evaluate so then this A actually turn out will be corresponding to a sequence of uh, uh, character, local characters. Okay, and then if we can calculate uh, elements uh, and so for example if you look at the uh, characteristic function of K V prime of each element K U K V, and then result is that this is just the uh, um, cardinality of uh, k v prime g v prime k v prime divided by k v. Okay, so the this uh, so this eigensystem, uh, this one, this is the same eigensystem of the constant function. So that we will call the such uh, <coughs> systems uh, trivial uh, Hecker system. So this is a, a nice story when we look at uh, the coefficient, just a localized, okay? And then uh, when a uh, when, uh, coefficient to be arbitrary k, then we have a following property. Properties. Uh, one is that uh, the list comparisons isomorph is isomorphism. Morphism is isomorphism. If uh, if L is a flat uh, over a a algebra. Okay, and then uh, the proof of this is using the uh, again the normality. So this A localized is already isomorphism, and then plus the comparison theorem for the flat base change. Okay. And then second one, we can show that uh, this is only injective if uh, L is uh, F 
VR Jabra. And, and this is uh, uh, we are interested in because we want to study the gene field module for MART, MART uh, V. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe we don't know. Maybe uh, we. This is just so far we have we we don't we don't know how to show that this is isomorphism. Because uh, we, we, we need a geometry in the previous, uh, for example, a curve, then space is smooth, so this isomorphism is, uh, is, is uh, this problem is unseen, and then now we found that it's, uh, 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 the spatial fiber we don't know is normal, so that's the reason of that. And then uh, to sh the proof of, uh, of two using the foreign uh, Proposition that uh, we proved that the uh, the spa geometric spatial fiber is uh, uh, reduced. This is what uh, we used from geometry to make sure this injective. Okay, and then nevertheless we we will uh, go further um, because uh, we want to. Study the heck eigen system lab. Let's let's consider the situation. For the situation, um, so we this is how we want to start it. And then of course uh, there's an injective map to the M tilde of R K. Okay, so this is coming from the uh, inductive system and take a kv in prime to v invariant. And then, of course, we have a heck action. And then uh, the question is whether or not uh, this is injected. And uh, this is invariant under heck action. OK. So actually, uh, we, that will be uh, something um, not so clear why uh, this is uh, finite dimensional. So, the, so you, you, you see the. The analog, so when we take an uh, inductive system, this is just like uh, one, only like uh, we are moving like toward to the universal covering. And then th for the analytic definition, this coming starting from the most universal one, and then since that's some property. So this is, uh, uh, this, this definition, tilde, is more close to like uh, uh, analytic definition. Uh, and then one way to show this guy is uh, final dimension is that we have that comparison theorem. And so then, so that's, of course, there's a sum. This is not, a, actually, this is OK. But uh, at, at the beginning, will be a little bit confusing. And then, um, then we are also introducing the uh, uh, a variant. So the variant is that we have a spatial fiber. Then we take a normalization of that and take a pullback of hard line bundle of this one. And then on here, we have already have a spatial fiber is normal. And then using the uh, result one, one can show that this is uh, uh, it's agree with the tech inductive limit and tech invariant. OK. And then, uh, of course, the, this will be inclusion inside here. And then we have an inclusion here. And then by the consortium, we also have heck algebra. And then we also can consider. So now, this will informs that this is already finite dimensional. And then one can also consider the, if I don't know, it's invariant, but I can consider the uh, heck module generated by this guy. OK, so the, eventually we want to show these are three are the same. But at this moment, we, it's not so clear we, anyway. But the, uh, so the naive question, of course, that's important, is, is the uh, spatial fiber uh, normal? Uh, if this is yes, then that's, of course, there's no uh, confusion. At it. But at this moment, we don't have this property, geometry property. For the curve, of course, it's smooth, then it's we don't have this. OK. So then, uh, so this a little bit uh, lose the 
not so much about the geometry and then we will look on here and of course this is contained in here so if we look at the, all the possible hack eigen system arriving from here it's also uh, this also contained in here so we will study on this object <coughs> okay so now we already identified the object we want to locate indeed uh, this has a prime to v hack module Now I can try to describe our second result. It's a Jackie uh, Langan correspondence mod V. Um, right. So now we only consider the special case k equal to principal complex circle, and that uh, v is a place does not divide by n, and then we uh, look at the this modified space. This is a big, a little bit bigger. And then it equipped with the hack action, but I, I for the hack action system, I only want to look at the spherical part. So spherical part. Uh, this is uh, my this. I change my notation. Okay, and then of course K, uh, I have to remove N and V. Ah, uh, N. Right, and, and V. Okay. Okay, so uh, suppose I have an uh, element inside here, then I can, um, of course, I can get a system of, uh, uh, heck, I can system of this, uh, all the, uh, each member will be the prime to PV characters. Actually, C is okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so one, we are interested in the I just this one. This is the set of uh, all prime uh, to uh, V n hack eigen system. Uh, coming from uh, this hack module. So I fix the K. I fix the. Uh, capital K, I fix R, and then I, but I let uh, the weights are changing. Okay, so a priori could, it might be have infinitely many uh, sets. Okay, this is what uh, one side we are interested in. And the other side is uh, uh, or, or some called the algebraic module form in the sense of growth. So that this will also produce another uh, set of uh, hacker eigen systems. So then we starting with uh, D. This global is a, a central division algebra. Of uh, a degree. Uh, so this would mean the dimension R square. And we impose the ramification, uh, ramified precisely at uh, infinity and v, and with invariant. And uh, in here, we have a uh, minus 1 over r and 1 over r. This is called the uh, algebra of gene field type. And then uh, we fix the maximum a order. <coughs> and then from here, we cook up a group scheme. This is a group scheme over A, for each uh, A algebra R, we go to G R. This is just uh, oh, coming from this uh, integral model, coming from this maximum order. So it's just a magnetic group. 
And so uh, we consider that the space of a uh, uh, automorphic function. So uh, I just mentioned that uh, it's, very, it's very important that the a to a of prime final ideal. This is a discrete co-compact. Discrete co -compact. And then we can just look at the final ideal. This, yes. V bar. F V bar. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes, I. Uh, right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I consider the spherical part. Yes. Only. Thank you very much. Right. So, uh, right. So we consider the space of uh, uh, automorphic form. It's a local constant function. And send to F V coefficient. Yes, this is now com compatible. And this is the space of automorphic form. Actually, this by this definition, we means that uh, the infinity is constant. Okay, so we only look at this part. Okay, so then uh, we consider the open compact circle at U at V is defined by a kernel of uh, G. This and go to and this is equal to uh, maximum of the local completion. Then we have a subjective map to the F. It's a residual field, Q, R, R. Okay. So we, this is a, a open compact circle inside at V. And so then uh, we are interested in is the uh, second hacker eigen system. It's a uh, look at the prime to uh, VN hacker eigen systems. Uh, of of this automorphic form and fixed by u uh, n and also by k v. Okay. Okay. So because of away from v and then um, so we have this identification. Okay, so then uh, one can that that it makes sense to compare this and this via this isomorphism, and then uh, our second result is that they are the same. Natural by it's a there's a bijection between the heck eigen system and then heck eigen system of uh, it's a kind of inter inner form, and the second one is that we we can also uh, determine the the bound the size of this uh, finite set, the cardinality of this heck eigen systems will be actually less than the space of Automorphic forms. This is quite clear. And then, uh, but we have a we have a formula for this. This is just the cardinality of a g mal a mal n 
times the cost number of A times the GV of R mass 1 of 2 mass 1, and also times the uh, some special zeta values. Sorry. Uh, I remove infinity and V of minus I. So this is uh, our second result. OK, so let me uh, uh, sketch the proof uh, of uh, two first uh, that using uh, assuming one. OK. OK, so the way is we are, uh, uh, suppose we have this, then of course the uh, cardinality will be uh, less than the dimension of this uh, space of automorphic form fixed by V and then K prime to V. And so uh, we just need to show this part. And then we introduce in the RV. This is uh, just a set of uh, isomorphism classes of, of um, super singular, super singular uh, field A module. A module uh, over F V bar of rank R. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for this, this is a finite set, and one can have a. Uh, this is the uh, um, I should uh, I should uh, Dorian I should uh, type um, theorem is give a description, and this is also uh, due to Professor G. Keller. And then for each such a type uh, finite set, we can associate the mass. So this is cardinality will be the class number. It's more complicated to calculate. But the mass formula is easier. So one can define the mass of this set uh, V. This just, uh, it's a weighted sum uh, weighted by the uh, symmetry of the object uh, super singular. One. It's a weighted, weighted class number, and then the mass formula, uh, mass formula, and this is uh, uh, also due to G. Keller, and also uh, extended by uh, Professor Jin Yu and myself. That uh, it's uh, uh, almost like this way. So I hope I just just give a space. Uh, so it will be. First term will be a uh, class number and divided by Q minus one times the, yeah, it's much simpler. Okay, so this is a mass formula. So without any level, but now the space has some level. So at prime to V, v we have a, uh, this part, and then, and the, we want to compare the the, ve um, the level here and the level at here. That this this produce the this one. So this is exactly the level of uh, A V divided by. Right. So this is you can see from the uh, cardinality of this one. So this give a proof of two. Now we want to. Uh, so actually, we don't see uh, many uh, uh, good bound for the uh, dimension of module form. We don't have much. So, so because uh, typically, um, typically it's uh, difficult to have a uh, calculate this uh, uh, trace um, trace formula. Have a many many elliptic ill term. This makes things very complicated. But uh, in some sense, we have a, a king, king, king formula in some special case. OK. So in the remaining five minutes, uh, I will try to describe the idea of the proof of two. One, OK, sorry. So the idea is when we want to choose the 
a sequence of Heck eigenform, a sequence of Heck eigenform, Heck uh, eigenform, uh, like H1 to H of uh, minus 1 uh, of, uh, on the spatial fiber and uh, with, uh, say, weight to W uh, minus 1. And also want to make it to be uh, with a trivial uh, Heck eigenvalue, Heck eigen system. So I always explain what a uh, uh, Heck eigen system is trivial. And then we, uh, for simplicity, we also write uh, the same letters. On the um, its normalization uh, uh, using the same letter, and also uh, the poop omega four is too bad. For sorry, the same letter for the poop back. They poop back. Okay, and then also uh, for its poop back. Okay, and uh, so then uh, for h is between zero and r, then we consider the uh, locus of this h one to h of uh, h minus one. Okay, this sub subspace. This is inside uh, the uh, normalization. Okay, and then we also require. We can select so that uh, when the smallest one, h equal to r, this is equal to uh, the, the super singular locus of this, and also the super singular locus of that. This is the super singular locus. OK, so because of a super singular is in interior, so it doesn't modify at the boundary, so they are the same, okay? Now we consider the uh, exact sequence. So in the middle, I have H0 of, uh, so this is X of H. Uh, this is, uh, and I consider recession map to H of X. Okay, and then the kernel coming from the uh, multiplication by H of H. Okay, minus W H. Okay, and then um, so the decision is okay. Again, this is a heck equivalent, equivalent, and then uh, because of uh, the choose is a trivial heck eigen system. This is a multiplication is also heck equivalent. Okay, so suppose we have a form, this one, then we uh, eigen form, then we k the uh, restriction. And if if uh, the restriction is not zero, then uh, the list form. Uh, so so we we, f we see that the the forms uh, eigen system here will uh, also arrive in the heck eigen system here. And if uh, the restriction is zero. Then we can uh, move, just uh, move to the lower weight, and then we can also select, select another one, which is also a hack eigen form map to here, that we have to uh, show that uh, the exists of that. And since this is hack eigen systems, so one can, the uh, hack eigen system of F prime is the same as the hack eigen system of F. So as a result, we showed that the, the hack eigen systems uh, the by induction, uh, we show that the the original one will in contain the the Heck eigen system prime to V n Heck eigen system of uh, the super singular trivial modules. I put the uh, K and V. This one, uh, this is by definition just the uh, normalization 
and take the super single locus of this one. And yeah, and then we we also let uh, k is greater than zero, moving all the k. So this is the one uh, one direction, and then we see uh, this is the bijective uh, because of uh, bijective bijection because of uh, we have a two property. One is a periodic uh, property of the super single Jensen module as uh, module form. This is so we hacker equivalent to the list S K of H. Uh, let me see. This is V R uh, minus one of K. V. And then the second one is we know the uh, restriction map. Memorize uh, to uh, this S uh, just H of uh, I would write S K. R K. Uh, this is a subjective uh, because of uh, uh, omega is ample. Ah, so that, so if uh, k is uh, sufficiently large, then because of this is uh, omega is ample. So then this is uh, show that um, uh, so that a uh, eigen system will be the same as a super singular uh, field form. And then we also need to uh, using the similar description like this one to show that this is coincides. It's now it's already very clear, very, very close to relative with this in the phone. So I just leave the details uh, away. So, so that's all. Thank you very much. Mass, right. formula. So the mass formula is something like taking the trace of the operator one on your space. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Do you have um, uh, an eichler silberg trace formula for the Hecke operator so that you can determine a canonical form in each of these rank R spaces? Uh, no, but the, uh, we the, for the underlying. Uh, so, so we have. Uh, you mean the identify the find the basis for the ma space yeah, of well module no that. no but the, for the space uh, we uh, so here is uh, the what is sum is kinds of uh, 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 easier but uh, if we want to understand the honest of uh, this space so this is class number so then uh, Fu and I has uh, some some work about uh, this class number for uh, even for the uh, non non necessary mass, but so the so the space uh, vector sp the dimension of a space it's uh, it's known, but uh, we don't we don't have we don't know how to construct the forms, eigen right, forms. So that's oh. right. But my, what my point is okay. though is if you can compute the the an eichler silberg trace formula for each of the Hecke correspondence, you would, you might have the ability to compute the canonical form, yeah. which is taking the average over all the traces. Ah. The reason I'm going with mm -hmm. that I see. is because then you can consider this formula as R varies. Mm -hmm. and if you consider this formula as R, people have done this in the ordinary case. Mm -hmm. If you want to build, mm -hmm. so there's canonical piet. The eichler silberg trace formula, if you fix a group and mm -hmm. let the weight go to infinity, it, the only things that move are, um, are these polynomials in P that depend on polynomials in K that depend on the weight but the actual pi and pi bars don't move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you can show ah. that, in, that, you can, that, the, that the, the, the trace forms form a piatic analytic family using the fact that the, the generating function for Chebyshev polynomials is already a piatic object. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think is ah. if you do this here and you have a eichler silberg trace formula for each of the Hecke correspondence, this is the trace of the number function one. Yes, exactly. Right? Yes. Sir. So you now you are. Trace no, and yeah. then in our aspect, you have a theory of. Yeah, right, 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 right. So, so you you talk about the uh, spectral decomposition of this space of automobile Now using the operators. Yes, sir, like no, you only no, do, no. You only, oh, yeah, exactly. So that's uh, uh, they will get the equation yet. of a uh, two expression, <laughs> and then you have to yeah. try to find the choosing the clever of a hack operator to exactly. to isolate it. That is also a trick from the trace formula. Uh, yes, you're right. Okay, or right, you should. Oh, well, okay. I, I'm very interested in that. Uh, that
I, I, I have a question about this normality uh, <laughs> remark that you made that uh, you don't know if it is normal in mm -hmm. characteristic mm -hmm. yes. P. Yeah. So I think if, if you do Pink's construction in characteristic P for, for fields of uh -huh. characteristic P, yes. where P is an ideal, right. but you right. assume that level is co-prime to P, then right, right. I think yes, it right. works and yes. it shows that it's normal. So, so the question is, well, your arithmetic construction when you reduce, uh, when you consider closed fiber, is it the same as Pink's construction? Right, exactly. So we don't know. <coughs> so that so you're you're saying what you are saying is that this your your if you follow the Pink construction, this should be a normalization of the spatial fiber of our uh, arithmetic stack complication. That you but, cannot prove. But we but we cannot show these two are the same. Ah, okay. Mm. Um. So yeah, we can we can. But anyway, so that another choice just take a normalization. So we take the scheme over A D yeah. and that's normal there. So this is our moduli space. And yeah. then we pass to the special fiber. Yeah. So we don't <coughs> know whether that that base change mm -hmm. preserves no kind of We could we no the whole thing is No, the construction is not functorial for base changes, only for flat because you do some normalization and that gets lost across the special fiber. So we could do like just the special fiber construction over F me, but this is then the M norm which you wrote down. And that will be pink thing. Right. If we don't do it on in the family but only over the special fiber. Right. And that's the M norm. <laughs> okay, thanks again to the speaker. <laughs> and we restart at uh, half past ten, so in twenty minutes. <coughs> so we can go on with the next talk by uh, Changnim Fabi Namoi Jam. Okay. I just uh, apologized for possibly mispronouncing uh, the name, which is quite difficult for me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, she will talk about hyperderivatives of periods and quasi periods of T modules. Okay. Uh, first of all, I thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Uh, uh, as is given here, this is joint work with Matt Papa Nicholas. So first, I so what we want to do is uh, we want to first realize uh, hyperderivatives, uh, actually periods and quasi periods as uh, special values of rigid analytic trivialization. So for that, let me introduce a few notation which have already been already been introduced a few times before. Um, so A, here. A is the binomial ring in variable T over my finite field FQ. Uh, K is the fraction field. Uh, K infinity is the completion of K uh, with respect to this absolute value. Uh, C infinity is the <coughs> completion of the algebraic closure of K infinity. And I take K bar to be the algebraic closure of K inside C infinity and I for my talk, I'll give C infinity this notation of K, and uh, T to be the tet algebra on the closed unit disk. Okay, so uh, for an element F of K, I take the Frobenius automorphism F cube uh, when tau x on F. Uh, then I define sorry. Then I define an automorphism on power series with coefficients in K by, uh, uh, by tau acting on the coefficients. Okay, so uh, sigma will be the inverse of tau, which is uh, sigma x, x on F by F to the power one over Q. Okay, so uh, I let T be a variable independent from theta 
and I define k t tau to be the polynomial ring in t and tau uh, such that t is uh, commutes with all elements and tau x on a as a power q tau. And similarly, we define k t sigma where t is a t commutes with all elements and sigma x on an element a of k as sigma a equal to a power 1 over q sigma. Okay. And uh, k tau and k sigma are subrings. Okay, so I also want to introduce this uh, <coughs> operation of star on a polynomial in uh, uh, in k tau, where I do inverse twisting of uh, to the power h for for h uh, uh, for every a h I do a h inverse twisting and then I replace tau with sigma. Uh, so we extend this definition to matrices, which is uh, I do the star operation on each entry, and then I take the transpose of the matrix. Okay. Excuse me. Do you really mean sigma on the at the, at the middle, or should this both types be a tau? Which one? In, in this yes, in this equation. So tau, and this will be turned into sigma. Isn't that the adjoint? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Okay, so now I'm ready to talk about Anderson T modules. Uh, and Anderson, uh, a T module over K is an FQ linear homomorphism uh, such that phi of T is given uh, this way uh, with uh, L being greater than zero. And uh, my matrix of constant terms being uh, theta ID, which is the identity uh, matrix and n being an, uh, a nil button matrix. Okay, so uh, this has already been said before. We have a unique exponential function uh, which is given by matrices, uh, by a matrix uh, formed by power <coughs> series in uh, k tau uh, with this uh, functional equation uh, with the uh, matrix of a constant terms being the identity matrix. Okay. So if the exponential function is surjective, then we say that phi is uniformizable. And we did not uh, by uh, lambda phi to be the kernel of the exponential function, which is a uh, finally generated fq theta submodule of k power t. OK. So uh, what is a t motif? A t motif is a left kt tau module M, which is free and finally generated as a k tau module, such that uh, there exists some uh, positive integer s uh, with uh, t minus theta to the power s uh, m is contained in tau m. Um, we, call we call d the rank of m as k tau module to be the dimension of m. And if m is also free and finally generated as a kt module, then we say that m is abelian, and we call uh, the corresponding rank uh, of m as uh, kt module uh, the rank of m. Okay. So for our case, we take this uh, t motif um, m, uh, which is given by a uh, row vector of polynomial in uh, <coughs> k tau. Uh, then m is a t motif of phi with the with the t action given by this. Okay. Okay. So we say that phi is abelian if m is abelian. The corresponding m is abelian. Okay. So, uh, but anyway, similarly, I will also be using uh, dual t motifs, which is k t sigma module, which is free and finally generated as k sigma module, such that again there exists a positive integer uh, s such that t minus theta to the power s of m contained in sigma m. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what is a phi by derivation? A phi by derivation is an FQ linear map with this functional equation, uh, and then I set n perp to be this uh, uh, the space of these uh, vectors alpha, such as alpha uh, multiplied with n is 0, where n is the nilpotent matrix which I defined earlier. Uh, so if I take an element m in my t motif m, such that the 
constant, okay, so when I say dm, I mean the constant term or the matrix formed by the constant term uh, is an n perp, then the biderivation, which I denote in this way, uh, given like this, where when I say a uh, theta, I mean I evaluate t at theta, uh, is called an inner biderivation. And if in addition, if I have uh, dm to be zero, then I say that my inner biderivation is strictly inner. Okay, so I have a, a few notations. So der phi will be the set of all biderivation. If I put i in there, it's going to be set of all inner biderivations. If I put si, uh, set of all strictly inner biderivations, and they are all k vector spaces. Okay. So yeah. So here. Uh, when I say HSR phi, is a space of strictly reduced biderivation uh, of uh, space of biderivation mod by the space of inner biderivation, and uh, the space of Dirac biderivation, <coughs> space of biderivation mod by strictly uh, inner biderivations. Okay, so again, uh, for every biderivation, we have a strict, uh, we have a unique entire uh, function which map. Uh, vectors in k to an element uh, of k, uh, satisfying this functional equation, and it also does not have a uh, constant term. There's no constant term. Okay, we call this the quasi-variodic function of my biderivation delta. Uh, and then we denote uh, by eta, uh, yeah, there should be a delta here, uh, lambda, if I, okay, so func uh, my quasi periodic function evaluated at lambda, where lambda is an a period of phi, is called the quasi period corresponding to lambda. Okay. All right. So uh, okay. So I want to say what a quasi periodic extension is. So if I take uh, some bi derivations, delta one to delta k then uh, the qua a quasi-periodic extension of my T module phi is a T module C uh, whose dimension is going to be D plus K, where K is the number of biderivations I took here, uh, which is given in this way. Okay. So the exponential function of this uh, quasi-periodic extension uh, is going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be like this, where in the uh, d, uh, lowermost d entries, it's going to be the exponential function of phi uh, applied to z, and then in the in the uh, first k entries, it's going to be my u1 plus the corresponding quasi-periodic function of delta 1, uh, delta 2, and so on. Okay. So now, uh, if my delta 1 to delta k are k linearly independent classes in my strictly reduced by derivations, so strictly reduced by derivations. If I uh, to recall it, uh, uh, the space of by derivations mod by the space of uh, strictly inner by derivations. Okay, then we say that C is a strictly quasi periodic extension of phi. All right. So uh, for our first theorem, I need to talk about rigid analytic trivialization. Okay, so. Okay, here we go. So I said that uh, uh, when my corresponding T motif M of phi is uh, abelian, then we say phi is abelian. So similarly, when my dual T motif is, uh, uh, my dual T motif is free and finely generated over KT, then we say that phi is a finite. Okay, so in our case, we take the dual T motif to be this uh, row vectors where, uh, yeah, real vectors of polynomials in k sigma. So since my uh, t motif is a finite, I can pick a ba k t basis, k bar t basis of h. And if, uh, if I let block h be this vector, uh, then there, uh, I mean, let phi be the invertible matrix with entries in k bar t, uh, such that uh, phi uh, is the action of sigma on block H. Okay, so if there is a matrix, invertible matrix with entries in T, actually it's supposed to be T algebra, uh, satisfying 
uh, sigma, to the, power, the first twisting. So I want to twist each and every entry of uh, sigma, inverse twisting, uh, is equal to phi sigma. Then we say that C is a rigid analytic trivialization of phi. So here's a term by Anderson. Uh, the T module phi has a rigid analytic trivialization C if and only if phi is uniformizable, which is the exponential function is surjective. Okay. okay. So uh, we want to define the Anderson generating function for a T module phi. So for this talk, I want to stick to a T module such that my B0, which is the uh, matrix of constant terms, is theta i plus n, where n is uh, the matrix with 1 in the upper diagonal and 0 everywhere else. OK. So then I define the Anderson generating function in this way. So exponential function applied to, OK. So when I say d theta, uh, it actually is b0, because d theta is the same as like uh, theta in the diagonal and 1 in the upper diagonal. So uh, OK, so in this way. Okay. So let m1 to mr be a kt basis of m, because if I recall phi, I took it to be abelian. Uh, then tau m1 to mr, uh, uh, to tau mr is a kt basis of tau m. And let lambda 1 to lambda r be an fq theta basis of the period lattice. Then I define this matrix epsilon uh, in this way, where tau m1 uh, is applied to g lambda 1, where I replace u by lambda 1, and so on uh, for g lambda r. And then I go down in this way. OK. So now I have our first theorem. So this is from uh, Chi Chang and Papa Nichols paper from 2012. So given the Drinfield module phi uh, defined over k bar, the rigid analytic trivialization OK, so Drinfield module is uh, dimension 1 T module, as we all know. OK, so it's strictly a uh, quasi-periodic extension C of my Drinfield module phi have the property that uh, k bar of uh, C, uh, which is a rigid analytic trivialization matrix of uh, my uh, Drinfield module phi evaluated at theta is equal to k bar of uh, the uh, period lattice of my quasi-periodic extension phi, which, which when I say that, I mean like, I mean uh, when omega 1 to omega r are, are, uh, form fq theta basis of uh, lambda phi, then, uh, then uh, and f tau to power i is a quasi-periodic function corresponding to this by derivations. Okay. Uh, okay. okay, so this is the theorem we have. Suppose phi is an abelian and a finite T module, uh, T module, then for a strictly reduced, a strictly quasi-periodic extension where phi of phi, uh, the span of each entry of, uh, if each entry of elements of uh, the period lattice of the strictly quasi-periodic extension is equal to the span of the C inverse evaluated phi. So additionally, in the process, uh, we also proved that the rank is less than or equal to dl, where l is this, uh, uh, this power, where bl is non-zero, non-zero matrix, and d is the dimension of our uh, t module. OK, so what is the motivation? <coughs> so there exists a matrix, uh, invertible matrix V, such that c is given in this way based on a result of Hartle and Yushka, uh, we could find uh, this V. And also, for a uh, biderivation delta and lambda, which is a period of my uh, T module, uh, the quasi-period corresponding to lambda can be, uh, can be evaluated in this way. Okay. And then uh, what we do is we found the k-span of epsilon 1 uh, theta. So, uh, so in, sorry, so yeah, that's it. So I will do one specific example. So in this case, I want to take a T module, which is abelian and a finite, but also the, the, the matrix of the highest coefficient 
uh, is going to be invertible. Then uh, for the duality motif H, uh, which I took earlier to be uh, this row vectors, with the T action given in this way, then we have that Eij, so uh, row vectors with uh, yeah, D tuples where, where sigma to the power i uh, is in the j spot, forms a kt basis of h. Okay, so uh, the rank of e is uh, dl. So in this case, uh, this was also in Hartel and Yushka's paper. I mean, they evaluated this v. So v is uh, in this way. So my bi's are the bi's from uh, uh, this expression. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's the example. So uh, in 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 the abstract of this talk, I mentioned uh, a T module by Brownowell and Dini. So for that, I need to introduce hyperderivatives and hyperdifferential operators. This was also introduced in an earlier talk by Nathan Green, but I will recall just in case. So, uh, so if I have a field of characteristic P greater than zero, then we define the jet hyperdifferential operator with respect to theta, uh, to Laurent series uh, invariable theta, to be the F linear map uh, satisfying uh, this. Okay. So and and I call uh, the partial uh, the J partial with respect to theta of f to be the hyperderivative of f with respect to theta. Okay. So uh, this matrix, yeah, this matrix was also introduced by Morishat in his talk. So we call it the D matrix with respect to t, depending on the variable, because I will also be using the variable theta at some point. So variable t. Uh, if I put an n here, then I want it to be the n by n matrix where f in the diagonal, the first hyperderivative with respect to t in the upper diagonal, and so on till uh, the n minus first uh, hyperderivative. Okay. So I want to introduce this notation. So if I if I have a power series here, and if I put a uh, f uh, to the power in in, uh, in in bracket j, then I just want the uh, hyperderivative with respect to theta, uh, j hyperderivative of the coefficients. Okay. Cool. Okay. So Brownowell and Dini uh, took a t uh, Drinfield module, given in this way. Uh, so they uh, set up this t module. <coughs> which is in this way. So the, the, the point is uh, we have the unique expo of this T module, we have the unique exponential function given in this way uh, with the exponential function of the original Drinfield module, the first hyperderivative of the coefficients, the second hyperderivative, and so on. Okay, so that's it. <coughs> so. Let's say I took uh, delta 1, delta r minus 1, k linearly independent classes in H, S, R of phi, and corresponding quasi-periodic functions. Then uh, we have the, this t module, which uh, rho, uh, rho t is a t module from here. OK, so which is defined in this way. OK. so. Yeah, the exponential function is going to be the exponential function of rho, which we had the exponential function of phi, its hyperderivative of coefficients, and so on. And again, we have the quasi-periodic uh, functions, hyperderivatives of coefficients, and so on. And uh, yeah, OK. So the T module above, which is this T module by Brown, Valentini, is not abelian, and it is also not a quasi-periodic extension. And hence, its period is not realized as special values of rigid analytic trivializations. And that is what we want to do. OK, so what is the goal? Given a, an abelian t module phi, we want to find an abelian, another abelian t module whose periods and quasi-periods are given by hyperderivatives of periods and quasi-periods of my uh, t module phi, like in the case of and Dini. So to do this, we use a construction of Morishat. 
from his paper. And uh, <coughs> logarithms and quasi logarithms can also be realized, but we're still working on that part. Okay. So the construction by Morisha that I want to introduce is uh, prolongation. So, okay. so if I have a kt tau module m, and uh, then the nth prolongation of m is the kt module uh, p and m, which is, which is generated by the symbols dim from 0 to n. Uh, in this way, with this product group. Okay. And I also have given the tau action here. Okay. So if I have a t module phi of dimension d, and if I let m be the corresponding t motif, then we define the nth prolongation row, which is a t module, uh, to be the t module associated to the nth prolongation of m. Okay. And uh, the nth prolongation row is abelian of dimension d n plus 1, where d is the dimension of phi, and n plus 1 corresponds to this n. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah. So what is the, uh, so I, I took n minus first prolongation because I want my matrix to be, uh, like, if I want, uh, because I want my dimension to be n d. So <coughs> the n minus first prolongation row of phi is of dimension dn and is given in this way, which is uh, phi t will be in the diagonal and negative of the identity matrix will be in the upper diagonal and zero everywhere else. Okay. All right. So the exponential function of the n minus first prolongation is given in this way, uh, with the uh, if if block z is z one to z n, which is uh, z one is going to be. Uh, uh, column vector with d entries, uh, d. Okay, so exponential function of phi, of z1, and so on. Okay, so in, so like I say, in our case, uh, we want to take b0 to be uh, theta in the diagonal and 1 in the upper diagonal. If I take this abelian and a finite t module, we let r be the rank of phi, uh, r be the rank of phi, so we can check that the dimension of HSR of phi as a k vector space is, is going to be r minus 1. And uh, dimension as k vector space of my uh, Durand by derivation is going to be r. And uh, for as, uh, the dimension of HSR of rho, which is my n, n minus first prolongation, is going to be nr minus d, which can be written in this way, from, uh, from which I conclude that a k vector space, uh, my strictly reduced by derivation of my n minus first prolongation is isomorphic to this. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I have this. Uh, this is just a, a functional equation of quasi periodic extension. So, if I have i, which is a positive integer, i can be <laughs> written in this way. Uh, v is less than q and s is less than q power l. We can write in, in this way, where l is a different l. Okay, I should have used another l, but l is a different l, different from my original l. <laughs> okay, so if, uh, and I have a bi derivation epsilon given by epsilon t is equal to <coughs> this. So I write j to be greater than equal to l plus 2. Given any bi derivation, we can do this. We just have to add an appropriate uh, inner bi derivation, and it will turn out that they are in the same class in the Durand bi derivations. Okay. So for this, uh, for epsilon, we take the corresponding quasi periodic function to be this. So I want uh, this epsilon is a bi derivation of my t module phi, not the prolongation. Okay. So uh, we can show that it satisfies this. Satisfies this. Okay. So we have the following result. Uh, phi is an abelian and a finite t module, and rho is n minus first prolongation. Then there exists, meaning we can find a, uh, a, a k basis of HSR of rho such that the quasi periodic extension uh, has exponential function uh, in this way. Okay. So this uh, from here to here is coming from the prolongation. And then this, uh, this is the strictly, uh, sorry, this is the quasi-periodic function corresponding to my uh, 
delta delta i's, which are by derivations of rho, uh, which is uh, which is given in this way. Okay. For some non-trivial uh, epsilon in the Dirac by derivation of phi. Okay. So a corollary, the period lattice is uh, going to be again in this way with this with this sum where the by derivation is of the sorry yeah uh, where the um, hyperderivative is of the quasi period so as you can see here it's the the uh, the hyperderivatives is only of the coefficients but in this case we can prove that the hyperderivatives is of the whole thing okay okay so i can combine the first theorem uh, and 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 this uh, corollary, and then we can get this uh, corollary. So if I have V, an abelian and A finite T module with rigid analytic trivialization matrix C, and phi is a strictly quasi-periodic extension of phi, then the K span of, so when I say DTN of C inverse, uh, it is that matrix where C inverse will be in the diagonal, and then uh, derivatives in, and so on, with respect to T. And in this case, so how do I get this is, uh, if I take a T module whose uh, strictly, sorry, whose rigid analytic trivialization matrix is C, then the rigid analytic trivialization matrix of my prolongation, N minus first prolongation is going to be exactly the DTN of C. So this is how we get this. And uh, the K span is equal to the K span of T theta N of, uh, of my, yeah, actually, I don't. Yeah, okay. So, the theta n of uh, uh, the period lattice of the strictly reduced by derivation. Sorry, of the strictly quasi periodic extension of phi. Okay. So, thank you. Okay, so. Any questions, please? Yeah, you just said the li linear independence results. Um, yes. I mean, you just said the result that the k span is um, the same. Yeah. Um, do you think you can also get uh, algebraic independence or algebraic? That's, that's what I'm trying to do next. Okay. Yeah. So there seem to be no further questions. Thank you once Thank you. again. And the last talk of this conference, it will be given by Fafa Nicolas from, uh, um, now I just from Penn State. Uh, uh, te Texas, uh, sorry, so uh, I didn't uh, look at it. Uh, okay, yes, and uh, uh, the title uh, will be um, Equidistribution of Cross Points over Rational Function Fields. So please. Thank you. And uh, so, yes, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to uh, come and talk about some recent work. Uh, so, let's see. So, uh, first of all, um, Everything I'm going to talk about today is joint work with um, Ahmed El Gindi, um, Riyad Masri, and Gu Chao Zeng. And um, so I do want to, well, the first part of the talk will be sort of review of notation and certain, princi uh, certain things that um, may be review, but I just want to make sure we have everything straight. So first, but first the notation, which I think will be familiar. This may be only the 10th or 11th time we've seen this this week, but okay. So Q is a power of a prime P, but it's going to be a power of an odd prime. And A is a polynomial ring in the variable theta and K is its fraction field. K infinity is the completion of K at the infinite place. And so this is just FQ, the Laurent series field, 
in one over theta over FQ, and um, and we'll take uh, so of course so theta one over theta is this uniformizer at infinity, and we'll take C infinity uh, to be the completion of an algebraic closure of K infinity. <coughs> okay, so then um, we will sort of throughout we're going to fix a, an irreducible um, polynomial in A. So this is going to be monic irreducible. And, um, and then we're going to let D represent uh, a, a, polynomial, a monic polynomial of odd degree. And uh, for the moment, we'll let D sort of be fixed, but eventually we want to allow D to vary. Um, but throughout, uh, P naught will be fixed. Okay, so um, by taking uh, D monic with odd degree, if we take the field capital K, which is little k adjoined square root of D, then this forms an imaginary quadratic extension, uh, meaning that it's uh, prime at infinity is, um, uh, is inert. And uh, so, um, we can, uh, we'll, we'll take OD to be its ring of integers. So it's just A adjoin the square root of D. And, um, and then we'll take pick OD to be its class group. So it's, I, this is the ideal class group of OD. And then HD will be the class number. OK. So now, um, so uh, the title of the talk was about equidistribution of gross points on uh, over rational function fields. And so w what the first part of the talk will be about is it basically giving a definition of gross points um, in this setting, and then talking about what what we'd like to do with them, and sort of why we think they're important. Um, so for uh, and to do this, we we will you know, follow the treatment. Well, the treatments of Papikian um, from two thousand five, and uh, Fusunwei and Jingyu. Uh, from 2011. So, um, almost everything I will talk until I state our main theorem. Almost everything that I'll say is uh, uh, do uh, well, coming from their treatment, and then also uh, from. Well, I'll point out some other other things as well. But every, everything will be reviewed for the moment. So it starts out in the following way. So we want to look at definite quaternion algebras um, over K. So we're going to let B um, be uh, such an algebra. So this is a definite quaternion algebra um, over k, over little k. That's ramified um, um, only at p naught and infinity. So uh, just to remind you, so we take the, a, a quaternion algebra. Um, so this is good, going to be just a, a four-dimensional uh, little k algebra. And um, with the property that when, uh, so to be ramified at p naught and infinity, um, just to remind you, this means that um, if we take, uh, we take b and we tensor um, over k with, say, kv, uh, that this is isomorphic to uh, two by two matrices um, over kv uh, if v is not p naught or infinity, and otherwise, uh, when we take uh, b tensor um, over k with kv, we, we get uh, with, with at p naught and infinity, we we still get a division alg algebra when we extend scalars to, uh, to their completions. So to give you an example of what's going on, uh, 
Well, uh, so this was in Moran's paper. And so, for example, um, we can take algebra that looks like k plus k alpha plus k beta plus k alpha beta, um, where um, there are two possibilities. So alpha, we can take, say, alpha squared equals d for whichever polynomial d that we've chosen. Uh, beta squared is our fixed irreducible polynomial p naught. And of course, as, as usual, we need beta alpha to be minus alpha beta. And this would be if um, the, the quadratic symbol uh, p naught over d is equal to 1. And other, or if it's negative 1, then you, we want alpha squared to be d, beta squared to be uh, c times p naught, and beta alpha is negative alpha beta. Um, if p naught above d is negative 1 and c is some element of, which is a, not a perfect square in fq. So this is an fq cross, but not fq cross squared. OK. So, um, so, th so and this is, this is one, one way to construct such a quaternion algebra. Um, Um, I, I think I mean, so. What we want to do is talk about uh, um, uh, yes, yeah, 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 for that Q is odd, yeah, 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 it, it, yeah exactly, right. Um, yeah. So for a minute, I thought you were asking about the degree of d being odd, but of course, that that, that will come up later as well. Okay. So um, after we have such an algebra, we can talk about the you know defining a definite Shimura curve, um, which will denote x uh, sub p naught. And um, so following along with uh, Wei and Yu, uh, they work out the following. Um, so just in general, say we have our definite quaternion algebra, um, which is of the, of the form k plus k alpha plus k alpha beta, or plus k beta, plus k alpha beta. And um, say with alpha squared is a, beta squared is b, um, and a and b are in k cross, then we let y over k be the curve um, given by it's just a conic, and it's just going to be a uh, z naught squared plus b z one squared is equal to a b z two squared. So this is a conic in P two, and um, it has the property Property. Um, so for for a commutative K algebra, say M, if we look at the rational points of, of the M rational points of Y, then you can identify it with elements of the quaternion. Well, the we extend scalars on the quaternion algebra to M, and we take elements of this extended module or extended algebra, and they will be elements which are non-zero and whose trace and no but whose trace and norm are zero. So these are the um, well. The, we start out. We'll start out with this, and um, and then we mod out by um, by M cross. So. The M rational points have this uh, description. The trace here, this is just the usual, we have the usual sort of um, in, you know, involution on the uh, quaternion algebra. And so the trace is just x plus 
x bar, and the norm is x times x bar. And um, so once we've done this, then uh, what we can note is that so b, the b cross uh, acts on um, ym on the right by conjugation. So something like um, <coughs> so you take x star y would be um, y inverse yx. This is for x and ym, y and b. Well, in b cross, and uh, and then this this forms this gives a right action of of b cross on our set. I'm sorry. Uh, it will. It'll be related to that. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of where one one place. Uh, one thing that we want to set up. Um, so now, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so if um, k over k is our imaginary quadratic extension, um, so then we have a bijection between the embeddings of k into b and the k rational points on y. And so this is a bijection which is defined by, if, it, if I take, a, take an embedding, then it gets sent to um, a point, y sub f, um, which is the, so it's the image in y of k um, of the unique um, k line um, on this set that we have defined here. So it's but it, it k coordinates. Why to think of that set as a type of uh, hyperbolic uh, plane somehow? Um, maybe. There's a uh, characteristic zero discussion, which, which we have a group of units of a quaternion algebra acting on a kind of hyperbolic plane, giving you an arithmetic manifold. Yeah, it's hard, hard to say because the difference in the metric, but. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. We, uh, yeah, this is, but yeah, this is definite. But. Um, so we look at the sort of the K points in here. So we look at sort of the k points in this uh, conic, um, and then this would be on which we look at the image of fk cross that this acts um, by a maps to um, a over a bar. So, and then for the other embedding of k, uh, you would have uh, one where it acts by a bar over a, and so you get two possible points for the um, for different embeddings. And, um, but this is working in the image in, in Y of K, so after we mod out by K crop. So this uh, gives us uh, the following setup. Um, so we can define XP naught to be the following thing. So by definition, it's you take the completed, so first I, I need to, I'll need to tell you some what this notation represents, but you take what will be r hat cross. Um, so it's a sort of double, you look, it's almost like a double. Uh, so we take here, let's do this. So you take following. 
So what is R? So we'll take R to be a maximal um, A order in B. And, and then we'll take, um, say, RV for a, for a finite place V. We'll take this to be R tensored with AV, and then R hat is uh, the product over all V finite of RV. And similarly, uh, B hat, um, so BV, or rather B hat, would be the product over all finite Vs of um, BV. So where we tensor with KB. Okay. So the this ends up uh, giving us um, this. Uh, so we start off with Y is this. Um, we look at the M rational points on our conic, but then we mod out by the action of M cross, and then uh, so to find this Shimura curve, we take a product with. Um, sort of the completions of these quaternion algebra and an order in the quaternion algebra. And this, defined, this defines a curve um, to give us uh, some idea of, so it's easier to see what the points on this, it, it, we can now, we can sort of, using this definition, I, we can t see what the points on um, x P not look like so for commutative K algebra M. So X P not of M is just the following, or it looks like take R hat cross. Um, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. This is acting on the left on B hat cross and cross y of m, and then modding out by the right action of b cross. And um, <coughs> there's a lemma due to way in u. Um, so if we let g1 through gn be representatives um, for um, the double coset space where you take, you, so you take b hat cross and you mod out by the left action of r hat cross and the right action of b cross, this ends up being a finite space. <coughs> so we take g1 through gn to be um, representatives of this double coset space. Um, so uh, then Uh, X P naught maps to the uh, disjoint union from I equals one to N of Y modulo um, uh, gamma I. So we can take these curves and they mod out by the action of a finite group where gamma I um, is the following group. It's GI inverse um, R hat cross GI intersect B cross. So we have this as a finite group. So the point is that we can, uh, so then this is, um, and so we have an isomorphism. Um, so basically what this means is that this curve is really a disjoint union of genus zero curves. And um, um, let's see here. So a couple of things. Uh, so first of all, um, so for left ideals, say I and J contained in our uh, maximal order, uh, 
So we set that you know, i is equivalent to j if i is, say, j times u for some u in b cross. And so this gives us a way of defining sort of um, an ideal class group um, on the quaternion algebra. And then what we find is that the number of um, left ideal classes of R is, um, say, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same as this number n that we had here. So it's the number of cosets uh, from uh, these number of these double cosets. And so we can make this identification. And um, so for if we let, uh, so for ideals, say I1 through IN representing these classes, Um, then uh, we have um, uh, corresponding maximal orders <coughs> R1 through Rn such that, um, so that, you know, um, so that, say, Ri is you know, the set of all elements of B such that it's like the, it's like the um, so these are classes of left ideals and these are the right orders associated to these ideals. So it's xi times i sub i times x is contained in i sub i. So it's all elements of, of B that satisfy this. And so these are all the kind of different maximal orders that we can, um, we can construct. So what are gross points? So gross points are going to be points on x naught or on this xp naught disjoint union of genus zero curves. And we want to think of them as being kind of like special or CM points on these curves. So Um, so again, we have our field, our imaginary quadratic field, K. And um, so, so a point, say at, we'll call it X, which is going to be of the form, say G comma Y, which is in the image of um, of this map that sends, so if I have, if I take something in Y of K and then uh, cross with um, R hat cross, um, or B hat cross modulo R hat, uh, then I can map this to the K rational points of X P naught. And um, so X is going to be uh, in, sort of the image of a k rational point from the left-hand side. So this is called a gross point um, on xp naught over k. And um, so what is it, what do g and y uh, represent? Well, so g represents some element in b hat cross modulo r hat cross and um, and Y um, corresponds to an embedding F from K into our quaternion algebra. Um, so, and so uh, such that um, F of K intersect G inverse R hat G is equal to F of O D. So basically that when we look at the image of um, the ring of integers in k adjoint squared of d, 
into uh, the quaternion algebra, it can be, it, it's basically all the k-rational points that end up in this, uh, the, the points which are conjugated by, uh, by g. Um, okay, so, Um, let's let GRD um, be the set of gross points of discriminant D, meaning that they're ones coming from, you know, K is K adjoin squared of D. And um, so we're really only thinking of, of D being a uh, fundamental discriminant in, sort of in the sense. Um, then the class group of OD acts on the set um, in the following way. Uh, so if you take an element X, so for sigma in the class group, you can, you know, using sort of the the dichotomy from, or the uh, correspondence uh, from class field theory, we would see that we can define sigma of x to be, so this is the same thing as sigma of our point gy over here, and this will be uh, the same thing as g sub y sigma, or g comma y sigma, where, um, so y sigma um, corresponds to, um, taking this embedding that corresponded to y over here, so we could call this you know, fy, and then uh, composing it with sigma. And so this gives us an action of the Picard group, or of the class group on, on the set of gross points. There's also an action um, of the Galois group of k over k, um, k over little k. So there's, uh, so, um, oh, I'm, I'm conflating things in my notes. Okay, so this needs to be erased. Or maybe I should have taken the easier route, but okay. Um, so you have actions of two things. So the Galois group acts like that. So you have sigma x is um, g y sigma, where y sigma corresponds to um, the embedding composed with sigma. How does the class group act? It acts by, um, if I take, uh, so the, by identifying the class group with, um, the usual double coset space. You take the Adele's mod out by um, uh, mod out by uh, the ring of integers on the left. Uh, then what we end up with is uh, so if we take something in here, say a, then the action is um, that. G, G Y maps to um, the point G times F hat of A comma Y, where F, F hat is the induced map from the completion of K to the completion, or to the, you know, the basically the finite Adels of um, K into, into B hat. Um, so these two actions are compatible, and uh, so what this allows us to um, to find is that if you look at the number of gross points, that this is, it's just equal to uh, the product of these, um, sizes of these two groups. And so in fact, it's just twice class number. Okay, and this was, this was proved by um, Wei and Yu in 2011. They have a more general formula. In fact, I should, I should mention that their formulas uh, don't require that P naught be uh, an irreducible prime, but uh, we, we've stuck to that, we've stuck to that case to make things a little simpler for what we want to do. 
Um, and they also, they, so they give a more general formula, uh, but in, in our particular case, it boils down. We end up with this, uh, this result. Okay, so the, um, where do we want to go with this? Well, we want to identify or, you know, look at how these things are related to super singular Drinfeld modules. So the idea um, would be the following. So if we let D be the degree of P naught, and we take F P naught to be A modulo P naught, and we set um, So we have the natural map from A to A mod P naught, which then embeds into the algebraic closure of F P naught. And we'll call this composition iota. So this is, we look at, we're looking at Drinfeld modules in characteristic P naught. And um, so here we really are only gonna talk about rank two super singular Drinfeld modules. But we let, let's say, phi be a map from A to FP naught, polynomials in tau over FP naught, um, where we send theta to iota theta you know, plus, um, say, g1 tau plus g2 tau squared. So this is rank two. And we say phi is super singular. If, um, well, essentially, if you look at phi p naught, that it just looks like tau to the 2d. So um, because these coefficients are in fp naught bar, basically, we're just saying that all the previous coefficients vanish. So essentially, um, the, you know, the p naught torsion uh, as a set of points is just tri is trivial. Um, so what we can take away from all of this, maybe I can erase this, is that we have the following sort of nu numerical identities. So, um, so we had this number n, which, yeah, so just to remind you, we had this, uh, um, if we take xp naught, we can write it as the disjoint union of a bunch of genus uh, zero curves and the number of components was n, so these are all genus zero curves. And um, so n is the number of components, and it's also equal to several other things that we've seen so far. So it's the left number of left ideal classes of R, so of our maximal A order in the quaternion algebra. It's also the number of conju conjugacy classes of maximal orders, or maximal a, a orders of R. Oh. Pardon me? It's a type. <coughs> okay, yeah, maybe you, you can explain that to me. I don't, um, A orders, um, hmm. Okay, so I will ask you about that, the distinction there. But. So why, okay, so I must have misread. Um, so I think, So I'm, I must have, mis we must have misunderstood something. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, all right. So now I'm, <laughs> Thank you. 
but this is this is okay. Okay, this is this is what we actually need then. Okay, then I must have. Hmm. All right, I will have to. Yeah. So, and this is the number of components of XP naught, and this is also the uh, number of isomorphism classes. of super singular rank two um, Drinfeld modules. Over F P naught bar. And um, so uh, Let's let all right, so uh, in the interest of time, I will say the following. So there's an, a map from a set of gross points to so there's a, a map from the set of gross points to the set of super singular uh, Drinfeld modules over FP bar. Um, which is going to take our point X and map to um, uh, some uh, Drinfeld module. So let's say that these Drinfeld modules are denoted phi1 up to phi n, and they correspond to the ideals i1 through i n. And so what is the map? Well, the map is that so x is equivalent to um, E sub i x in the Picard group of x p naught. So x p naught is, of course, a, a union of genus zero curves. So the Picard group is just uh, free of rank n. And so we'll just take this E1 through E n to be the generator. Um, a canonical, well, a set of a set of generators, and um, we can. Uh, so our main theorem. I think we've. That's a good question, which I will address oh. in a moment. <laughs> so it's not necessarily surjective. Um, but that's actually one of the motivating questions we had was when when is this or or can 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 we see when it when it might be surjective, and uh, so so our theorem uh, so this is from earlier this year so we we make a few assumptions that simplify things a little bit. But we'll assume that the degree of p naught is greater than three. Um, we're going to let d be irreducible um, monic polynomial of degree d, um, uh, which is odd. Um, and then we assume that p naught is inert in uh, k adjoined square root of d, um, which we call k as before. Um, so given a subgroup of the class group of OD, um, uh, a gross point um, <coughs> uh, 
X and a super singular Drinfeld module over FP naught, well, FP naught bar, um, uh, we set N G D phi I really, and also this depends on X, um, at least to start out, that this, we take this to be the number of elements of the group uh, such that, so the group that we have this action of the class group on gross points. And so we look at, you know, C of sigma times X. Um, and we want to know when uh, this gives us um, uh, our um, chosen super singular Drinfeld module. So we're li basically looking at the orbit of X under sigma, and we want to know when th there are elements, uh, in which elements of the group you know, sort of land on this particular uh, super singular Drinfeld module. And so what we show is that um, essentially this, once D goes, to, the degree of D goes to infinity, then these essentially become uh, even equal, you know, evenly distributed. So, so then for epsilon greater than zero, if you take the number of G over the size of the group, um, so we get a formula. Oh, and I, sh okay, so there's something I need to tell you about. Um, so it's going to be, so mu p naught, I'll, I'll explain what it is, but this is just a weighted probability measure on, the, on this set of super singular Drinfeld modules. Um, in, pr in principle, defined already in Jafu's talk, <laughs> but uh, plus big O of the index of the group in the class group times, uh, uh, so take absolute D to be Q to the degree of D or Q to the little d. So it's the um, size of D to the negative 1 fourth plus epsilon. And so here, um, so mu p naught um, of uh, phi i is just a, it's, it's like 1 over, uh, so it's like W i inverse over the sum j equals one to n of W j inverse, where W i or W j is the, the the size of it, of the automorphism group of phi i, and so this is just one or q plus one, and um, so we we end up getting that basically uh, that so we can we can count uh, the number of um, sort of orbits which hit, uh, elements of the orbit which hit uh, um, phi sub i by just sort of peeling out um, this constant in front. And then we get something which, well, as d gets larger and larger, we have to know kind of what happens here. But um, uh, more precisely, So these, um, this big O here, uh, um, we can, well, we can, I can, we can say a little bit about what the dependence is. So if we take uh, so we just, um, if we take the difference here that this is less than less than, depending on epsilon, of some constant um, depending on p naught, uh, the one half times the size of p to the epsilon times q to the one fourth times the index of the group in the class group, and then times the size of d to the negative one fourth plus epsilon. So we can get something more precise. Um, and the, the implied constant that's in here, this, it doesn't depend um, on i, it just depends on epsilon. Um, I should say what C of p naught is. So C of p naught um, is the following. You take the sum on Drinfeld modular forms, or 
automorphic forms of Drinfeld type uh, for P naught. Um, so these are um, so this would be a basis of eigenforms for automorphic forms of forms of Drinfeld type um, on gamma naught of P naught. And then we take, it's just the some of the reciprocals of their Peterson inner products. And, um, okay, so uh, a couple of things. So first of all, uh, um, oh, it's a, and it's, it's an orthogonal basis of eigenforms. Can I yeah, sure. Can you have some numerics to see if there's something even stronger than this? Could it be that if G is sufficiently large that it could be like a perfect power of the super singular locus? <sighs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure we've looked at that. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be. I mean, so basically um, that, uh, so if, so as a kind of corollary, so if um, this index, we don't have a ton of control on this in general, but if it, if it satisfies that it's less than the size of D to the 1 fourth minus epsilon, then, um, then basically uh, what happens as the degree of D gets large, then this uh, um, goes to 0. So, so then the way to say it, I guess, is that um, C of the, say, the orbit of X is equidistributed with respect to mu P naught. Um, on this set of super singular Drinfeld modules. Um, Yeah. You can actually prove that's like a perfect power. Like yeah, kind of, kind of like what what you and. Power of the Poisson variant. So yeah. There are situations where you could actually get also at the Weierstrass points. Yeah. So this was similar to what you so and uh, what Scott did. Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, but these are all things to think about. I think uh, yeah, because this is just saying. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That that not only do we is it surjective, but that you get the same multiplicity. Yeah. So there's possi possibilities, I think. Um, yeah. um, I think I'm getting short on time, so I won't uh, say um, too much about the proof. But I, I do want to. You can kind of see what uh, kind of the direction it goes is that we there's a connection uh, worked out by Papikian and Wei and Yu between these um, set of gross points and or sort of the, you look at the, uh, the look at the Picard group and you can form a pairing on the Picard group weighted by these WIs such that it's compatible with, uh, um, in, with uh, the action of HECA operators on spaces of Drinfeld, uh, automorphic forms of Drinfeld type. And so what you find is that um, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so the main the main starting point is this theorem um, which says that if you look at this Picard group of XP naught and tensor with C um, that this is isomorphic to um, the space of new forms on gamma naught of P naught and I put new in parentheses because there there are no new forms here because P naught is irreducible but uh, in they they prove this so way so way and you prove this in for general uh, general level and, and in that case you get use new forms so you have this isomorphism but it's not just an isomorphism of C vector spaces but as Hecke as um, Hecke modules so and so you use the f fact that the Hecke algebra so that means that you can get it a kind of um, identity between uh, the um, 
sort of our, our basis on the Picard group and basis of um, eigenforms with for Drinfeld module or for these automorphic forms. And uh, so this is, I guess, the, a sort of version of a Jack A. Langlands correspondence for these, uh, for these automorphic forms. And then what we do is, uh, so there's a formula, that, so I think because I'm almost out of time, I'll just uh, say a few words about what happens. So um, the, uh, the idea is then um, to relate uh, um, this quantity, um, where is it? Yeah, to relate um, this uh, quantity, this counting uh, uh, function that we're looking at to um, uh, the special value of a, or the sum of special values of L functions of uh, these automorphic forms evaluated at a half twisted by uh, some, HECA, some HECA character for um, OD. And, to, and then what we can do is we can manipulate things around so that the expression that we are looking for can be expressed in terms of um, values of uh, sort of a pairing on the Picard group and the Peterson inner product. And then these can be bounded, we can, and, and, and also in terms of values of the L function. Value of the L function can then be bounded using a method of Altug and Zimmerman. Um, uh, which they which they apply to um, values of L functions for Hecke characters in the, in this context, um, but I think I will stop here. Uh, thank you for your attention. For the last time in this conference, you have the chance to ask questions or to give remarks to this talk. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, thank, thank you, thank you for asking that question because yes, we were inspired by this theorem of, of Philippe Michel, uh, where he works this out for super singular uh, elliptic curves over finite fields, and uh, um, and he, he uses in, where he uses a subconvexity result for L functions to uh, to prove this result, we um, uh, we use this method of Altug and Zimmerman. Okay, so uh, let's thank once again. And this now seems to be the end of our conference, and I would like first personally, but certainly for everybody of us, thank the organizers for all the preparatory work they did before the conference, and uh, in particular, uh, thanks to Federico for all the work he also had during the conference and helping us with all the small details and so on. Where is he, Federico? Yes, thank, thank you very much once again. And we should also be grateful to the uh, people from the administrative staff and uh, uh, to uh, our assistant here who did a perfect job in uh, having a smooth uh, uh, way of uh, um, having all these um, talks. Um, so, and perhaps many of us will meet each other in the conference in Stellenbosch in two months or in some other conferences to come. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>